consider it a cooch curfew. <laughs> Okay, class, today we're going to begin the third lesson of our sexual health unit. Last week, you all got to learn about the fun and eye-opening world of female and male genitalia. And as a little refresher, can I hear you all say what the male genitalia is called? That's right, penis. And what is a female's genitalia called? That's right, vagina. Today, we're gonna talk about sexual intercourse and how you can prevent those pesky, unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases. Or as you might call it, the clap. <laughs> clap on, <laughs> clap off. <laughs> so first off, we're gonna discuss protection. Like weenie beanies. <laughs> I appreciate the participation, Caleb, but let's please call them by their appropriate name, Condoms. Condoms. All right, now as far as condoms go, you actually have several alternatives that don't just include your traditional rubber condom. You can also wrap that willy with a cloth napkin, a paper towel, saran wrap, a paper napkin, Kleenex, a bandana, and even a plastic baggie. Although Caleb, I think you might wanna start small first, okay, hon? <laughs> Whichever option you choose, please make sure to pull it up above the testes, okay? Or else it's not gonna work right. That members only jacket needs to be zipped all the way up, okay? Get what I'm saying? And because it just makes common sense, you should also wear a minimum of two of these options around your joystick, okay? Three is actually preferred. Wait, but how are any of these options effective? I also suggest washing those condoms after each use before you wear them again for your next sex to paid. But do not question the science. This is science. Listen to science. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about deciding when you should have sex. Oh, you mean um, taking the necessary time to reflect and determining if we're ready to have sex for the first time? Loser. No, I'm not talking about that at all. Um, I'm actually talking about what time you should have sex. Oh, science strongly suggests that sexually transmitted diseases are nocturnal and thus extremely active during the nighttime hours. Therefore, they cannot infect you as long as you abstain from having sex from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. What the f Just consider it a cooch curfew. <laughs> Yo, is this Eastern or Pacific Standard Time? Uh, it's whatever time zone that you're currently in. Okay, uh, what if I'm on an airplane? Do you really think someone is pathetic enough to even get close to you and that cringy prepubescent creeper stash of yours? You know I'd be looking like a snack. Oh, um, how does that work with daylight savings time? Great question! Whether you change the clocks forward or backwards, just make sure that you're not getting hot and heavy between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Okay, sometimes people forget and they wake up with a special gift from the STD fairy. <laughs> Okay, what does the time of day have anything to do- Ah, uh, what did I say about questioning the science? Yeah, listen to the science. Okay, ladies, let's talk about protecting yourself from unwanted pregnancies. Now, if you want to prevent that bun in the oven, you need to keep that sausage out of the slow cooker while you're standing up. Why? Scientific research has shown that it's impossible for women to get pregnant as long as they're not standing up during sexual intercourse. You see, sperm often get vertigo, so they are completely disoriented and unlikely to make it to the egg if you're not in the vertical position. So that's how it works. So you are totally safe if you want to do missionary, doggy style, reverse cowgirl, the lotus. How does any of this make sense? None of this is logical. You know what, young lady? I have had it up to here with your science-denying ways. And I would appreciate it if you would stop questioning every little thing that doesn't sound logical to you. Yeah, just do your part and follow the science. None of this is scientific. Look, if you really have that big of an issue with these so-called illogical rules, you have two options. And what are those? One. You maintain a six foot distance from your sexual partner at all times. Then how do we have sex? You don't. That's the beauty of it. 
and it's actually 100% effective in preventing pregnancy and STDs. Lame. What's the other option? Oh, your second option? Uh, just become a state governor. They're exempt from everything. 